Reserve Bank Governor Lesitja Kanyako will remain at the helm of the South African Reserve Bank for another five years. SABC News Economics Editor Tepo Mongwai is with the Governor and joins us live from Pretoria. Good afternoon, Tepo. What do you have in store for us uh, that you will be chatting to the Governor with? Absolutely. Thank you very much, Diabo. Of course, um, the newly reappointed governor of the Reserve Bank has been over uh, 10 years at the helm of the South African Reserve Bank. And of course, he's got another uh, five years added uh, at the helm. He now joins us live at the bank's um, headquarters in Pretoria Centurion. Governor, thank you very much uh, for your time and for accommodating us. And congratulations on your reappointment. Um, another five years to go. Um, what is going to be your focus? You know, uh, Tsapo, I am uh, the most visible member of the, uh, the sub-team. Um, as it stands in uh, 2025, we will be updating our strategic review uh, for the next five years. I'm the public figure of uh, this institution. We, we set our self uh, goals and as we go into 2025 amongst the things we have got to be identifying were, are the global and domestic trends that would impact on um, central banking as we reposition uh, our strategy. I had spent the time over the past 10 years to make sure that the institution is seen for what it is a constitutional creature rather than being built in an image of an individual. And it's something I pride myself in, that wherever I have led organizations, I built organizations that outlive me. And so um, we can talk about the priorities of the SAP and where the SAP is coming. It's not like a Lesecha Khanyakho a thing is what the sub team is doing and they are fortunately getting into this mode that um, uh, we are preparing for the launch of our strategy in 2025 what we call strategy 2030 at the moment we have got strategy 2025 and we are we have started the process to review that and, and replace it with a new strategy in the new year how soon should we expect that strategy we, we, we table it at the time that we table our annual report uh, in, uh, uh, in Parliament. And so uh, our financial year end is the 31st of, of uh, March. And we are normally in Parliament around July, August. So that is when uh, we will be having a final strategy. The, the credibility of, of the central bank is its currency is the most important thing. Uh, what would you say are the things that we really need to guard against in order to sustain this credibility? Credibility is earned. It's not bestowed on you. The Constitution will give you the mandate and also say that it is expected that you act in the following manner. In our case, you must act independently without fear, favor or prejudice. The credibility you earn through the execution of your uh, your constitutional mandate and um, and living true to those expectations embedded in the constitution that says we must act independently and without fear or favor. And when one looks back, uh, we had had difficult uh, situations uh, economically that we had, had to uh, to deal with. We and globally. Uh, we had faced uh, challenges as, as central banks, and I could categorically say we acted through to our mandate and we did that independently and without fear or favor. Are there anything that you perhaps worried about as you start this, this term that we need to, you know, to be, need, need to be nipped in the bud, perhaps? Well, there are things that are worrying central bankers. I'm not sure that central bankers can nip them in the bud, but uh, that is what... Uh, uh, that is what we face. Uh, firstly, is that we are identifying a trend, and this trend was run by a major marketing, market surveying company, which established that globally 
in different countries, the citizens have become increasingly intolerant of inflation. And the reason is not hard to find. We have had protracted period where inflation was low for a very long time. Uh, time. I mean, in the case of the developed countries where inflation even went close to zero, and so interest rates went close to zero, and you have got a generation which for two decades do not know what inflation above 2% is, and they ended up facing inflation of 7 8%, and in some of the developed countries, even double-digit inflation. That was a very uh, important thing. The second is that um, uh, that um, rise in inflation raised important issues about central banks. Um, questions were asked, where were the central banks? Didn't you see the inflation coming? How do you forecast inflation? And um, should you be re-looking at how you are doing things? And as a result, in so many other countries, you also have central banks doing some introspection, asking somebody to review how they are doing their forecasts and all of that. And thirdly, is that uh, we, uh, as a small open economy that South Africa is, uh, the monetary policy decisions of the developed world now have got a disproportionate influence on the behavior of our exchange rates. So every time there is an indication that the Federal Reserve might be cutting rates or might not be cutting rates, you see the South African rent moving in different, um, uh, in different directions. So the issue about uh, the monetary policy of the developed world, what economists call tightening global financial, tighter global financial conditions, uh, becomes an important trend that we are constantly uh, having, uh, uh, having to watch. And lastly, um, uh, Tsepo, uh, it is very important for the central bankers uh, to understand that they are servants of the population and the population gives them particular responsibilities and that they must live through to those responsibilities and uh, continue to serve the population. There were discussions in the past with regard to the revision of the inflation target mm -hmm. to a, a lower level around 3%. Just update us on in, in terms of where those discussions are. Well, um, the Treasury um, launched a macro review um, and in the documents that they released as part of the budget, they just indicated that we would, should be moving to a lower target. And I think that they did it for a reason. And that is because the way in which the target is set in South Africa is that there is a conversation between the National Treasury and the South African Reserve Bank. And those conversations will uh, continue. Serious technical work has been uh, done. What is in no doubt is that if we have to revise the target, the target can only be revised lower. And the reason is that... Um, our inflation target is wider than that of the peer countries and is also on the high side uh, of that of the peer countries. But importantly, is that this is work that the Reserve Bank and the Treasury did in 2001. And when there was a crisis in 2001, we decided to go back to the old target, which was three to six. Because in 2001, the, the Minister of Finance then announced that we are moving to a target of three to five. Uh, but when we experienced the shock, we reverted back to three to six, and we never went back uh, to the three to five uh, uh, target. So the conversations are continuing. There are people will see the Minister of Finance making the announcement, uh, but the bottom line is that there is serious technical work that takes place between the Treasury and the Reserve Bank. And once uh, we have reached finality and found each other, uh, there would be some form of a pronouncement. Would you say you, you, you are ready to implement that target if it uh, approved? Well, um, we are always ready to approve any, to, to implement any target that, uh, uh, that we get. Um, the important thing is to make sure that the arrival, uh, the process to arrive at the target is robust, is evidence-based, uh, you identify 
the risks attendant to the movement towards that target, you are able to set a timeline to achieve that target, and importantly, that you uh, have in the toolbox of the central bank the ability to mitigate against the risks that might be associated with uh, the move uh, to, uh, to, uh, uh, towards the target. I think it's, it's important here to realize that uh, there is no virtue in high inflation and that what a central bank does by, um, or a country does by moving to a lower inflation environment is that it improves the competitiveness of the uh, uh, of the country. And in the case of uh, our national treasury, our national treasury has got just over 400 billion rent in debt that is indexed to inflation, which means if inflation goes up, the national treasury pays more in debt service costs. If inflation goes down, the treasury pays less in debt service costs. And the less they pay in debt service costs, they are able to reallocate that money to other priorities of uh, uh, of government. And that is what which in, in, informs uh, the thing, is getting the South African economy uh, to be competitive. And for the South African consumer, they would know this. When inflation was low and at 3% or so, the policy rate, the repo rate, was at 3.5%. And the reason the repo rate ended up rising again was because inflation had risen. But when inflation was going down, the repo rate followed and the repo rate went down. Last, uh, during the MPC, you mentioned that the uh, structure of the economy is starting to shift away from the goods to more uh, services. What are these shifts uh, or the challenges that is presenting uh, for the monetary policy? Well, um, I know I was referring to services inflation. Uh, many countries that are economies that are sophisticated, including our own, which have seen a significant shift towards uh, services. Uh, but when, with regard to inflation, what we have seen was that what had contained inflation uh, in South Africa was that services inflation was, uh, uh, was benign. Uh, for a long time, it was even below uh, 4%. Uh, we have seen that uh, creep up, but it's not a typically South African phenomenon. Globally, services inflation had risen and in a way for south africa over the past 12 to 18 months whereas services inflation was rising rapidly elsewhere in the world our services inflation was still uh, relatively uh, contained we expect that it will creep up but it will peak at about 4.9 percent and then uh, decline a uh, decline again and i think that uh, when people sometimes say that you are faced with inflation but there isn't much we try to identify what the underlying drivers of inflation are and we strip out the volatile items fuel electricity and food and then what is then left is what is called core inflation that core inflation is made of a component of goods and a component of services Goods inflation had been rising faster than uh, the target and hence we had had to respond to that as the Monetary uh, Policy Committee as we had done from November 2021. And services inflation had been contained and that helped South Africa to control overall inflation. Uh, but we are now seeing the trend where services inflation is uh, uh, creeping up a bit. But that, uh, fortunately, is happening at the time that core goods inflation is slowing down and the two are offsetting each other. As we're about to conclude, um, developments in the rest of the African continent, uh, Nigeria being one of the largest uh, players on, on the continent, uh, they are facing high inflation, uh, around 30%. The devaluation of, of the Naira, should we be concerned as South Africa? Are there any systematic risks from this? Not a systematic uh, uh, a, a risk, uh, but what we do watch as the as the central bank is that there are South African companies operating uh, uh, in various uh, uh, African countries, and to the extent that we have got these com uh, companies operating in various African countries, we take an interest in how those countries are are, are doing, uh, because there are two important things. 
these companies deployed capital from South Africa in those countries. And at some point, they end up also having to pay dividends to compensate for the capital that had uh, gone out. When that happens, it gets affected by what is also happening with the exchange rates of those, uh, uh, of those countries. There are a number of African countries now that are still having inflation elevated and rising, and you had mentioned uh, 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 Nigeria. And those countries uh, um, might have acted a, a touch late, and they are finding that they are having to increase interest rates uh, rapidly. If you have inflation of 30% or 40%, you can't, have, you can't have interest rates at 8%. You have got to have uh, interest rates at close uh, uh, to those levels. But I've got no doubt that the Nigerian Central Bank is aware of the challenges that a uh, Nigerian economy is facing and they should be able to deal with them. All right, that's what we have time for. Thank you very much, uh, Governor, and all the best uh, for your new term. Uh, that's Governor of the South African Reserve Bank. Um, there's obviously always a lot to talk about, about the South African economy. Uh, but we leave it there. Back to you in studio. Thanks so much, Tsepo.